Christ told us to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. About being innocent as doves, it simply means make sure you don't draw unnecessary negative attention to you. How do you do that? By being alert and knowing when to walk away. You need to know when to shake the dust off your feet. There are times you need to address something. Walking my faith doesn't mean just keep walking away anytime there's a challenge or anytime there's an issue. There are times, however, as Christ instructs, you need to shake the dust off your feet. That is when the situation is way too dangerous because people don't want to forfeit the danger. Now look, I've made a video, a very short one, talking about outsmarting paranormal patterns and demonic traps. I also made one about outsmarting uh, black magic operations. Now listen to me carefully here. No paranormal pattern can last without the contribution and the compliance of the population. So the people must be involved, even if they don't see their own involvement. And here comes to here comes another part about paranormal patterns. And that is that there's always someone that sees that something doesn't add up. It never happens that the paranormal pattern is, is um, active somewhere and nobody at all senses that something isn't right. Okay, let me give an example. Let's say you have, um, you have a guy called Jim and Jim, he always has what they consist what they say bad luck in the world when he goes on holiday often thieves come after him to rob him when he's at home often the neighbors uh, are complaining about him if you don't there's nothing to complain about when he's at the job often customers uh, are fed up and they dump all their frustrations with him even though he's not the one they should address they should address the manager of the place now all of this is going on and the manager who's one of the bosses of Jim tells him Jim how that customer treated you I don't take it I want my stuff to be treated with respect but Jim I know I've noticed that often customers do this to you they don't bother with any other people of my stuff but they always come to you even though I say clearly you, you don't provoke the customers, you don't even bother with the customers, you're just doing your job. And then the, the manager tells him, uh, Jim, haven't you noticed that it's like you're being targeted? It's like wherever you are, there's some kind of bad luck uh, haunting you? Jim, I'm going to be replaced soon. So I'm not going to be here for long. But let me tell you, Jim, you need to look for a solution. You need to look for help. If, if, some, if, if something bad happens once in a while, well, this is the world. It's a fallen world. It, it, people are, not, uh, people are in, a, in a defect state often, so things go wrong. So when bad things happen once in a while, okay, it happens to everyone. But when systematically bad things keep happening to you over and over again, even without you provoking it, even without you uh, being involved in the in any shape or form, then that is, as a, as a, as a Christian would say, demonic. Now, that manager is not a believer. That manager is kind of humanistic. He doesn't even believe in spirits like that, but he sees that something isn't right. And Jim goes at home and he talks about it to his wife, but the wife is kind of denying it. Here's the thing. The wife sees clearly that something is wrong. But here's the truth of the matter. It's not Jim that really has, has, a, has the issue. It's the wife that has the issue. And because Jim is married to her, Jim now is affected by what's haunting her. Because this is the history. The wife, when she was younger, 
there was conflict within her household. I mean, in her family. Her parents clashed with her grandparents. And this toxic environment leaked out to her. Her parents, from time to time, treated her in a harsh manner, even though they had no reason to. Now, the parents knew that what they did was wrong, but the parents were too proud to own up their defect. So, the wife grew up thinking that something was wrong with her, or else the parents would have treated her better. Now, this mark of victimhood, or mark of victimization, attracted the victimization spirits onto the wife. Well, the wife then was just a teenage girl, and she always got pre had predatory men after coming after her, wherever she was. And people began to avoid her. People realized wherever this uh, girl is, there's trouble. People didn't look at the bigger picture. just realized, okay, there is trouble. Who's there? She is. Everywhere she was, there was some kind of trouble or, or disagreement. Eventually, uh, this woman, when she was in her 20s, realized something's terribly wrong. But she didn't want to address what was wrong. Because she also developed all kinds of codependent issues that she, she didn't want to look at. So, so what happened to her was not her fault. But because she didn't want to process it, she now became a stakeholder of it because she developed uh, a phoning mechanisms that, that, that kept uh, the mark of victimization going. So... She found relief by marrying Jim. And now, the, the wound she had is not affecting Jim, and the demons that are, were haunting her are now haunting Jim. Now she's relieved, she's at ease, and Jim is the one being haunted. Soon, she will leave Jim, and she'll, she'll get involved with another guy, and then that guy will be the one haunted. And that's how it will go on and on and on, until she's delivered. In this case, in the case of Jim, the manager saw clearly something isn't right. There were more people that know that something wasn't right, but because they didn't want to go deep into it, they thought, ah, oh, it's not my problem, uh, so they didn't want to uh, look the other way, they turned a blind eye to it. There's always someone that senses clearly that something isn't right. That's why, and I said this before in another video, whenever there's a homicide case, someone was murdered, often in a very uh, brutal or disgusting manner. And the, and the detectives that are assigned to the case talk to the relatives of the deceased one. Let's say all the relatives or all the friends are very shocked, thinking, who will, saying, well, this individual had no enemies. This individual never barred anyone. I don't know who would want to do this. Now, there are times people are really shocked when someone ends up as a homicide victim. Because they're really shocked. They don't think, who would want to do this? But in 9 out of 10 times, folks are lying. They saw things coming a long time ago. They just didn't want to be involved in the solution. They wanted to be left alone so they won't have to face things. They were narcissistic and, and selfish. And now that things have gone out of hand, that could have been prevented, now they want to pretend like they're completely, they were completely oblivious to what was going on. Just to gain narcissistic, narcissistic supply from other people. There are a lot of folks like that. When they see something doesn't add up, they just run away. That's the only thing they do, run away. But at the same time, they demand everyone including people that are haunted, to treat them with the, with the best honor possible. You have such narcissistic people out there, they are enablers. And it goes like this. If you're on a ship, okay, okay, you can use the Titanic example, but okay, let's say you're on the Titanic, and there's a lot of silver, gold uh, over there, and there's, much, um, there's a lot of delicate, expensive food all over the world being served there, well, let's say you see that the ship's approaching an iceberg. And you see clearly that this is going wrong. The moment you notice that, you, you can already see, okay, this boat, the ship's going to sink. It's going to crash. 
What should you do? Should acknowledge what's going on and should inform your fellow passengers uh, things are going wrong. Get ready. But let's say now it has hit the iceberg and you sense that there's something's wrong with the ship and you go out there to look and you see that the ship is sinking. Then you know we need to pick up our life vests and go to the rest go to the rescue boats that are in the ship because the ships go to sink. Anyone who's thinking clearly would do that. But let's say you have someone who is out of their mind or they have a reprobate thinking. They see all the delicacy, all the silver and gold, and they see also the band start performing, and they think, whoa, I want to be part of this. I want to be part of a high society. I want to benefit from this. I paid my, I paid for, for this trip, so I want to enjoy all of it. Even though the ship is sinking. But now, this individual is denying that the ship is sinking. He doesn't want to face it. Even though his own life is in danger. And now, instead of him warning others, he will promote all the all the rich things that are on the ship instead, instead of acknowledging that the ship is sinking. So he will endanger everyone else by not informing them that the ship is sinking. You have such folks. They see that something doesn't add up, but instead of taking their responsibility towards the community by mentioning it or by, by provoking people to participate in a solution, they don't want to participate in any solution. They, wanna, they don't even want to bear their natural responsibilities. You just want to be left alone, and if needed, they would even contribute to the danger by either just fleeing, or by denial, or by scapegoating. There is always someone who knew what was happening. There's always someone. That's why I'm telling you, Beware of those you keep close to you. Are those you keep close to you, are they responsible people? Are they people that would bring to your attention when something is, doesn't add up? Are they people that are willing to participate in a solution to the best of their ability as far as, as they're able to? Or are they people that become resentful when they know that something doesn't add up? Are they people that become resentful when they have to take responsibility? Uh, when they have to act on someone else's behalf. Are they people that just, that will shun you when they notice something's haunting you? Because you have folks like that, when you are in danger and you need help, they begin to shun you, instead of you treating you as well, part of your community by reaching out to you. They see clearly that you're not a narcissist, that you're not an exploiter, that just, you're just someone that needs help, but they'll begin to shun you because they don't want to deal with anything in life. They just want to benefit but you don't want any responsibilities or any obligations. Some of them even reveal how narcissistic they are with being quote-unquote honest. They're not honest, but they're just open about their attitude and they expect people to embrace the attitude. And when you don't embrace that openness of theirs, they turn on you. They think just because they ventilate their, their frustrations openly, that's what they call honest. You need to embrace it. And need to take all the consequences of their of, of them um, throwing out their negativity. You don't do it, you hold them accountable, you're in trouble. Beware of the type of people you, you keep around you. Beware of it. Some of those folks, they will turn on you instantly when they realize that they have responsibilities towards you. Some fo and here's another thing I want you to pay close attention to. When someone is in danger and you see it and you mention it, you point it out, but they become resentful towards you. They say, mind your own business or who do you think you are? Or they turn on you. They don't, so they don't like you, they turn on you. Such an individual is dangerous. Let me tell you why. They don't want to face reality. And you are realistic. And you take your responsibilities seriously. They don't. So when you mention to them that something's wrong, then you're feeling onto them, there's work to be done. They don't want that. 
so so they're going to hate you for even mentioning that they that they need to do something and some of those folks may even become obsessed they begin to stalk you harass you because they're going to to dump their, their frustrations on you as if you are the one that's responsible for their frustrations that's also what you need to realize is someone just an endangered individual or are they at the, dan the danger you have endangered people and you have dangerous people that's a very big difference see the difference as soon as possible when you're dealing with someone that's delusional then you're dealing with someone that's dangerous when you're dealing with someone who has lack of understanding go to natural ignorance then they can be endangered but because they are only endangered but they're not dangerous you can deal with them you can address them doesn't mean you always will like it but eventually they'll appreciate it but if you deal with someone that's delusional I'm telling you watch out if needed you report things not to the, that individual but to the environment if, but when they're delusional and you see clearly that any mentioning of any reality here is going to trigger a time bomb then just avoid an individual and if necessary break all contact shake us off your feet you just don't being a coward that's being realistic delusional people are dangerous people and I made videos explaining what a fantasy is and what a delusion is. A fantasy is when you have lack of knowledge and therefore what you want to do will likely not work. Not because what you want to do is not realistic. It is realistic. It can be done, but you need to do it in proper steps. If someone lacks knowledge about the proper steps, then what they have is a fantasy. It means it needs improvement. And once it gets improvement, it will work. A delusion is when someone just wants relief. They just want to flee from things they don't want to don't want to face anything and they're so desperate to seek relief that they begin to cling on to anything that promotes relief even if that thing they're clinging on to is self-destructive for for them and they don't want to hear anything they only want to hear relief 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 anything that promotes the relief they praise that is a delusional individual they don't want to deal with any reality at all such people i'm telling you do not underestimate them when they are triggered because they don't have a way out when they can't escape they will escalate and everyone around them is in danger people will get hurt so there is all there was suddenly there's always someone who knows they just don't act on their responsibility well that's it for now keep agreeing with christ and be at